we've made. And that will cost us, because even if you control it per capita, volume is greater. Well, thank you for the answer. My time has expired. I yield back. Chair, recognize the uh, <clears throat> gentleman from New Mexico, Mr. Lujan, five minutes for questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And I would yield to our ranking member, Mr. Green, for a, a quick response as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to respond, respond to my colleague from New York. I don't, I've not had any of my seniors question the expansion of Medicaid based on uh, what's happening with Medicare. Uh, the Affordable Care Act was totally paid for. And uh, in fact, Medicare was improved under the Affordable Care Act. And Madam Secretary, if you just, uh, this is first I've heard that seniors are complaining that the Medicaid expansion is being paid out of Medicare. That's just, that's just not in, in fact that I hear about. Do you have any information on that? That is the first that I've heard that anyone uh, felt that that was an issue with regard to the federal budget, because I assume that's what they're referring to. Yeah, if the federal gentleman would yield one minute. Thank you, reclaiming my time. Um, thank you, Madam Secretary, for your testimony today. I want to reiterate what many of my colleagues have said, that we must repeal the SGR, uh, but not on the backs of seniors, and that a strong chip extension must be included with the SGR in March as well. Also, that the Affordable Care Act is working despite an attempt um, of over 50 Republican repeal attempts. The ACA has had a positive impact on New Mexico in my home state. In my home district, 25,000 people now have quality affordable health coverage because of the Affordable Care Act that didn't before. And overall, the numbers of uninsured has declined by 17%. With the law now fully in effect, Americans can never be discriminated against because of pre-existing conditions. Women can never be charged more for coverage because of their gender. And Americans will never be sold health insurance policies that disappear when they need coverage most, when they hit those lifetime caps and suddenly coverage dis goes away. I think that it's time that we come together and work to strengthen the law and stop playing political games that will strip millions of Americans of the health coverage they depend on. As my father would say, enough is enough. Madam Secretary, in your opinion, has the Affordable Care Act had a positive impact on places around the country, including my home state of New Mexico? Uh, yes, and I think it has in three areas. Affordability, access, and quality. With regard to the issues of quality, you touched upon a number of the areas where I believe there's been an improvement in quality. And those are the fact that people can have their children covered up to 26, the quality that you don't, if you have a pre-existing condition, you can't be kept out or thrown off of your uh, health care. The fact if you take your child in for their wellness visit, there isn't co-insurance, so you don't have to pay. Uh, in terms of that preventative care. So increases in quality. We've also seen increases in quality through partnerships we're doing with physicians, and we've seen a 17% reduction in harms. Those are things like infections and falls in hospitals. That's also about saving lives, but it's also about money. With regard to the issue of affordability and the progress that we've made on affordability, while we can all still continue to make more, we have in that space, and what we've seen is that in the years 2011, 12, and 13, we have seen a record uh, in terms of per capita health co care cost growth. It's one of the lowest that we've seen uh, on record, and we've seen that. That's in the broader marketplace. With regard to the individual market, what we've seen is that people, uh, the vast majority, uh, over 8 in 10 folks in the marketplace can find coverage using a subsidy that is $100 or less than a month. That's affordability in that marketplace. With regard to affordability in the taxpayer, CBO estimates pre the Affordable Care Act would have estimated that spending in Medicare would have been $116 billion greater affordability for the taxpayer. Lastly, access. The question of access and the fact that 11.4 million people have come through the marketplace this time, but let's even use last year's number, where we saw a 10 million person drop in the number of uninsured. So against the three fundamental measures, that's how I would think about it. I appreciate it, Madam Secretary, for your response there. And I do want to raise an issue that has great concern to my constituents and to myself back in New Mexico. It's now been over 18 months since the state of New Mexico claimed credible allegations of fraud or their, their allegations of, of fraud against 15 behavioral health providers resulting in the eventual closure or replacement by five Arizona behavioral health providers. This transition and turmoil has raised significant concerns across access to care, especially in light of recent reports that the new providers are financially unstable. In fact, one provider is already pulling out of New Mexico. The recently elected New Mexico Attorney General has also released the audit that led to the suspension, and it shows a lack of underlying basis for many of the allegations of fraud. 
My staff has had several meetings with CMS and I'm very concerned that we are not making progress. When payment suspensions are put into place, what can CMS do to ensure states are acting in good faith? And what is the CMS doing to stop the reoccurrence of this happening both in New Mexico and other states? And can I have your commitment that we can work together on this particular issue and meet with the delegation? I do want to work with you on this issue. I know it is one of concern in terms of making sure that people have access to those benefits. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I yield back the balance of my time. <laughs> well, thanks, gentlemen. I recognize the gentlelady from North Carolina, Ms. Elmers, five minutes of pressure. Thank you, and thank you, uh, Madam Secretary, for being with us today. I'm sorry, do you've got some water there. We should get you some water. Um, I do want to address, uh, before I ask, I have three different, um, very different questions to ask you uh, about, but I do want to address the issue of Medicare 